happy Wednesday. Um, we're up to the final part of these bedside tables that we've been working on uh, over the last, uh, what is that, three weeks now? They haven't actually taken that long, but I had two weeks off in the middle. Um, but we're finally up to our faux timber finish today, which is really exciting. So we've got down, if you haven't watched the previous couple of lives, quick recap, we have fully prepped these. So we've cleaned, scruff sanded and primed. Then we've got one coat of Pure Eco Silk Finish in the colour Fossil on the top. Two coats on the body. Um, we've only done one on the top because we're going to do a faux timber finish over the top. But I wanted a nice even um, sort of base to work with. And fossils, I find, is a really nice neutral to um, have underneath our glaze and our paint that we're about to put down for our timber finish. Um, and then the sides, they've got two full coats. Uh, they are looking absolutely amazing. The drawers are done as well. So today, though, is all about finishing the tops of these bedside tables. So we're going to do a faux timber finish. Um, it's very all the rage at the moment. Very, very popular. Um, a lot of people are doing it. It's good fun. I've done it in the past. Um, I think the last time I did it was probably a good two years ago, almost. Um, actually, yeah, it was two years ago because I found the photos last night. So about two years ago, I did this finish and I did it with the brush, which we're about to be doing. But we've also got today, um, I've got some wood grading tools. Now I haven't used these before but I've been dying to use them, so I thought let's have some fun. So we're gonna do the wood grading tools on one, and then we're gonna use a nice big um, natural bristle brush on the other one to create more of a brushed finish versus actually having the wood grain with the tools. Um, and we're doing that on these bedside tables. If you're just tuning in because these are MDF, um, they had a very thin veneer on the top, it was in, Pretty good condition actually um, but rather than stuffing around trying to get the finish off the veneer so that I can refinish them um, and for me bedside tables don't sell that well and don't sell for enough to make it worthwhile me doing that much to it plus I've been dying to do this again um, I've had a lot of you ask for this I know quite a few of you lately have been buying the products to have a go at your own um, faux timber finish. So I thought, let's do it like this so I can show you instead. Um, so that's our intro for today. <laughs> so we've got a few different products. Obviously we've got our wood graining tool. I recommend having some sort of plate or palette that you can pop your finish down onto because you only want a little bit of finish on your brush. Um, your wood grading is a little bit different. As I said, I haven't used these before, but I'm very excited to have a go and just see what happens. Um, if it doesn't work, doesn't matter. I can try it again um, another day, but we're gonna do one bedside with the wood grading tool, tools, one side with the brush, and then once it's all dry and done, I'm gonna decide, we might even pop up, I might even pop up a post and we'll have a bit of a vote, which one we love the most. Um, and then whichever one we don't love, where I'll paint over it with the fossil, because remembering it's only paint, we can cover it up. We'll paint over it with fossil and we will go in and um, do the finish that we love on that one. But I thought, I said a bed size, it's the perfect opportunity to, ooh, to have a play around with both looks. So. I like to have a plate um, rather than dipping straight out of the jars. I've got some sponge applicators. Not sure if I'm going to need them. I think my plan with the wood graining tools is I'm going to apply the stain and then run these over it. That seems to be what like 90% of the videos I watched do. In saying that, I only watched like three or four videos. <laughs> I've seen them over the years, but a couple of nights ago, I sort of sat down and watched a couple again just to refresh myself. So hopefully I don't stuff it up, but you never know. Um, but I've got some sponge applicators. These are the Pure Eco ones. 
the wood draining tools I got off eBay. They were just um, the cheap ones. I think I paid like 10 to $15 for them. It wasn't much. Um, they're not, they are the best quality. Well, I, I think you can get much better quality ones. Um, but who knows, if this works really well, I might even look into getting some um, better quality ones to sell as well and um, have on our website. Our brush is our Purico 100ml palm brush. So this is a natural bristle brush. As you can see, it's been very well used. I love these brushes. They sit in your hand really nicely, really well balanced and perfect for the finish that we're doing today. Um, and then we've got stain and glaze and we've got paint. Um, now my original plan, oops, was to use sepia stain and glaze and sable. So let me grab the board actually to show you these two colours. Alright, so where are we? We're on the wrong way. Oops, sorry. This is sepia, this is sable. So sable is like a dark chocolate brown. Sepia is a really nice warm warm brown as well. So these two I've used previously and they worked really, really well for this finish. That was my original plan, but, but I am almost out of sepia. There's barely any in my jar. Um, it's, there's like a dribble. So because I'm gonna do both bed sides and then redo the one that we decide we don't like, I'm not gonna use sepia. Um, just because I don't have any on the shelf, or I might have a large jar. No, that's a sable. Yeah. No, that's a sable on the shelf. So I don't have any on the shelf. I've got some ordered, and they should be here Friday or Monday next week. Friday this week, Monday next week. But uh, I'm, I'm impatient, I'm not waiting. So instead, we're gonna use sable, which is our dark chocolate brown. I've got driftwood, which is a really pale brown. Where'd my board go? So this is still a stain and glaze. So this one here is driftwood. This is whisper, driftwood, carob, um, sepia, sable, storm, and midnight. I can't remember many things, but I can remember all their names occasionally. And then I have grabbed um, in the silk finish. Yep, they're both silk finish. I've got fawn, which is a pale brown. Fawn is a very similar to, no it's not. What colour am I thinking of? I don't know. I thought it was fawn, but it's not for, oh, it might be clay. Drift, uh, driftwood has been turned into a paint colour, I thought. I thought it was fawn and I don't know why I thought that. Obviously they're nothing alike, but I've got fawn. <laughs> Ignore that brainwave. And I've got Brumby as well, which is a dark chocolate brown. I have used Brumby for this finish before as well. I actually don't think I ever posted about that. I might have, I'm not sure, but Brumby's a beautiful, beautiful color. So, got our plate. I think, brush first, wood graining tool first. Hmm. No, all right, let's do wood graining tool first. I'm, Normally, I already know what I'm doing. So doing something that I'm not overly familiar with, that I haven't practiced on a live, is making me a little bit anxious. <laughs> um, like, and lives I'm fine with. Do them all the time, never have anxiety about them, love them. But doing this today is just, I was standing here before thinking, why do I feel anxious? And then I realized, this is, this is why. So, um, we're gonna do the wood draining tools first. I just need to get this part out of the way, out of the way. Um, otherwise, my brain's gonna sit here and think about this the entire time and be all anxious, which is not what we want. All right, so I've got some sable. I'm just gonna pop a little drop. Yeah, I only want a little drop. I'm gonna put some on my plate without putting it everywhere else. And I'm also gonna take I'm just thinking we'll do some fawn and I'm gonna do a bit of a combination of the both as our base. 
I'm liking these two colors. We might still come in with the Brumby, but I think the Fawn, oh, you're very, let me give my jar a shake because it's a bit separated. I think the combination of the two will be quite nice. So I'm going to wipe it on with my sponge like I would, um, I just got stuff all over my hands, like, um, like you would stain a piece of timber normally. I just don't want to accidentally touch the sides of this and um, get stain on my freshly painted piece. All right, so I've got some fawn as well. Now it's shaken. That's better. All right, and remembering that fawn is a paint, so it's a lot thicker than our stain as well. Um, it's also a lot more opaque. I think so. Where that's what my okay, yeah, I think so. It's making sense in my head. So I've just got my spray bottle. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to it just to thin it down. Um, and then let's grab our sponge. Actually, I'm gonna wet my sponge here too. I don't want this super heavy, I don't think. That's not clear. I don't know. We'll find out what happens, won't we? So I'm just sort of going to use my sponge a little bit there. And so this is both colors, sort of, I've just dipped my sponge. I do like these two colors. So this is Sable in the Stain and Glaze and was it Fawn? Fawn and the Silk Finish. I think we're just going to sort of wipe it on like so. And I think I just want a nice even finish to begin with. I think the edges, I don't know if the would go, uh, I don't know. The edges I think we might just have to do like this actually. We might just do that because obviously our wood grading tool is not going to be able to get down and do those edges very well, is it? So I think we might just do it like that. Memory, I can paint back over this. So if it looks like crap, we are going to paint over it. Um, it's, not, it's not a big deal at all. Let me just shuffle and so I can go that way. Just want to get this edge as well. like so. All right, and then I think we really want to be scraping it before it gets too, um, too dry. So we've got one that's like an arch and then one that's got like the zigzaggy. I don't know, I don't think that's a technical term. And, like that, I reckon. Ooh. Oh, hang on, you can't see that. <laughs> that was useless. You couldn't see anything. Let's do that again. The sun's shining on it now, isn't it? Ooh, they kind of work. It's different. Let's try this other one. We can wipe this off. We can start again. So this is the other one. It's got a bit more of a thing. Let me just, that, is that better? That's better. Now you can sort of see what we've done. Yep. There we go. The sun's just shining on it and because it's glossy when it's wet. before. Oh, it was like, I was a bit worried that each one would look a little bit too, I think, similar. We go over the top. Like, that each section would look like almost exactly the same, which 
sort of defeats the purpose of it being a faux timber. But this is fun. I just want to see if I can go over the top. It's got some on there and it's sort of leaving that as a pattern. It's cool. I don't think I like it, but it's cool. I'm having fun. <laughs> it's, um, I think I need some practice. It's very different though, isn't it? It's, um, I don't know. Um, I don't think it would sort of, yeah, it's not really gonna work. Ooh. It's really not gonna work for those sides. Like a little bit, but not, not enough to be anything. No, I mean, it's just sort of peeling it. I think what I need to do is, I'm gonna grab a hairdryer. Hmm, actually, that might be easier said than done. Hang on, <laughs> where did I put it? Um, I'm gonna grab a hairdryer. I just wanna dry it. Where did it go? There it is. Um, I just wanna dry it a little bit, and then I'm wondering if we can go back over it. Mate, I'm wondering if I can like dip it into, dip the tool into the stain and then pull it over. But I feel like if we keep touching it while it's wet, it's sort of just gonna lift it rather than doing what we wanna do. So I'm just gonna dry it. I'm not loving it, but it's fun to experiment sometimes. Oh, that is good. Popping the um the skin that it's developed on those couple of bits, it's just a little bit built up. There's a couple of little pockets, but it's not too bad. So, it's cool. I don't like it. <laughs> it is, um, maybe it's just the contrast, but then I think it needs a bit of contrast too. But I feel like it, um, very... 70s, 70s the right era. It feels like a cheap piece of furniture from the 70s. You know, the really tacky, mass produced ones. That's what it's feeling like. It's cool, I'm having fun, but I wanna paint over it. I want to paint over it. But I thought, while we've got this, let's just have a little play around. I'm just gonna, I'm just spritzing down my little tool. 
I don't know where my cloth went, so we're going to use tissue. I'm just going to remove some of that excess. Actually, this works pretty well. Just want to remove some of that excess off there. It's sort of all, they made it out of like a rubber. And I just don't want too much on there. I thought, what if we dipped it in first? Why not? Let's have a practice. So this is the sable. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. There's only a little bit there on the plate, but. Why not? It doesn't necessarily have to be even, really, does it? What if we um, scooped it up on our sponge and splotched it on? Maybe? I don't know. Let's have a go. Um, no. No, I don't think that works as well, does it? What about if we did the paint instead? I'm just going to pop a splotch on my plate here. And then I'm going to use the sponge again. That was way easier. I wonder if paint would be a bit better because the sand and glaze is really thin, whereas this is the paint at full, full strength. I haven't thinned it. No, it really doesn't. It's got to be down. It definitely has to be already on the surface. I think it's one of those looks where you've really got to just keep. I think you've, it, it takes a lot of practice. I can't see myself ever really loving this look. It looks like very, very cheap pine. Like, hang on show you what I mean this is oops hang on sorry the back of that TV unit that we've been working on see this one here and it's like a massive there's the massive swirl marks in it the grain marks that's what it's reminding me of and normally when I get that on a piece it's not always like oh yes I love that I'm not having a love affair with this. It's just not, sorry, I'm just going to walk around the camera now. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Comments? Queries? Anybody else want me to paint over it immediately? <laughs> I'm not loving it. It was fun to experiment. I'm glad I've done it. Do I ever plan on using these tools again? No. <laughs> If you'd like to have a go, I now have a pair, a set of tools. So you're more, if you're a local, you're more than welcome to borrow them. Um, if you're online, reach out. I'm happy to send them to you if you cover the postage. Um, it was a fun experiment. I had fun. I think that's what matters here, isn't it? I had fun. Um, it's not going to get any better than that. So I think what, what I'll do, let's go over and do the protein finish that I like, um, which I always enjoy showing you, although I think I've only showed you a couple of times, and that was a while ago. Let this fully dry because it sort of left a few raised bits. I will just lightly sand over it just to smooth it out again. And then, um, actually, it's pretty... It has really lifted the product. Like, there's a fair bit of texture there. And I think if I just painted over it as is, or even just with a light sand, we would be seeing a lot of it through our paint later on. So I think what I'll do is hit it with the electric sander just for a second, just enough to smooth it back out, get most of this stain off that we've just popped on. And then I'll do a coat of the fossil back over it and then we'll go in with the finish that I'm about to show you on the other one and if hey, look if that doesn't work either then free bedsides anyway <laughs> all right so let's leave that be pop you all over there let's come over to this other one. Oh, hang on I need that plate pop you over there and you and get them out of my road okay so 
I want my sable, so we're gonna put some sable on our plate. Let me move you over so you can see what we're doing. It's always helpful. Now, I did just notice that I have a nice big scratch mark in that paint, and I don't know how that happened. So before we do anything, let's fix that, shall we? I've just got my fossil fossil. I have no idea. Oh, maybe that when I had them on the table the other day. Uh, I think it was Monday. Um, and I pushed one up against it by accident. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of my fossil over that. It's just that bit. Yep. All right, just a little bit of fossil over that. I'm just going to heat it with the hairdryer for two seconds. Super easy to touch up, and you won't see, or you shouldn't see that touch up either, which is nice. Um, fossil's really good. So the Purito range is really good for um, touch ups, and you can't see it, which is nice. So I'm just going to dry it. Bear with me a moment. Yeah. Alright, so you can still... I don't know if you guys can see it. You can still sort of see it, but because we're going to do the darker colours over it, you're not going to see it once we're done. So, I... Happy with that. So let's do our sable again. So you can do this look with just paint. You can do it with just stain. Whatever you've got, got is fine. So we're going to pop down a little bit of our sable. You don't need a huge amount. Well, I'll put it everywhere, ideally. I'm going to do some of the, this is the fawn. Mm. Bit of that. They're going to be my main two colours. I've got paint on everything. And still a little bit of the Brumby, I think. I'm just going to tip out a little, little splotch of the Brumby. You really don't need much paint for this look at all. Um, I've got the driftwood there, but I don't think I want it just yet. So, what you're going to do is make sure you can see what we're doing let me turn you that way a little bit i think is that better i think that's better you're going to grab your brush now my brush is dry and clean it's stained red but it is clean nice and dry so this is natural bristle you can see it's uh oh sorry it's quite coarse and it's perfect for this look you won't achieve the same finish or overall look with a synthetic brush. I have tried it numerous times and it just never looks the same. So a really, a good quality um, natural bristle brush is brilliant. I've used some, blah, blah, sorry. I have seen some people use um, like dust pan brushes and that sort of thing as well, cleaning brushes. But I find the Pure Eco brush is great for this. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take little splodging of your stain and you really really lightly going to and you really want to make sure that you try and go from one edge to the other if you start in the middle you're going to see that and you also don't want to have too many like that build up on the edge either. And I like to just sort of keep going over it and I keep building this. So this is just the sable still. And because I've got such a light base, obviously this is quite a stark contrast but I like to have a bit more contrast to start with you can also wipe your glaze on first and then do this over the top 
it's really up to you the best way you want to do it. Um, I'm going to come in with a little bit of that Brumby. I'm just going to tap off some of that ex excess on my plate. It's just going to bring in a slightly different tone. And then I'm gonna do another go over with the Brumby. I'm just pushing down a little bit harder on that last go over. So really spread it around. Now I personally wouldn't wet this down. I would keep just brushing it over. If you wet it, you're gonna reactivate it too much and that's when you're gonna to start to um, sort of blur it a little bit. You don't want that blur too much. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of that Brumby. And I'm gonna come in with a little bit of that Fawn as well. Again, only just a little bit Closer. See how little there is on my brush? It's just enough to cover some of the bristles. Not all of them have paint on them. If you get too much, just tap it off. If you find it's starting to blur a little bit too much, then stop for a second. Even hit it with the hairdryer just for a second and let it dry a little bit. That way it's not gonna blur as much. So the fawn's coming in and it's just softening those darker colors just a little bit. And the fawn's quite similar to the fossil in, um, sort of along the same wavelength. So it's just enough to sort of bring it all together. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of that sable. I really did not need to pour out as much as what I did. And I'm just wiping off some of that excess. And I'm just gonna keep Keep layering. More of the fawn. I like this so much more. It looks so much better than the other, than this rubbish. <laughs> oh, I'm going this way as well uh, because that sort of, uh, the most natural way a piece of timber would be cut. So we're doing faux timber. It is more likely to be cut in longer lengths than shorter lengths. So it, like for a bedside to be cut in that direction, pretty slim. Wood's always cut in the longer length. So always go, or try to go the longer way because you will get a more natural looking finish. It's never gonna look like 100% like timber. But we all know that. It's just a nice, nice little combination. And you just keep building it up. It's almost like dry brushing. And we're just gonna keep building it until we're really happy with it. We'll go in with some more of our fawn. Again, just a little bit on our brush. And I'm gonna come along as well on the edges and stipple it onto the edges as well so it all nicely flows.
more of our form. I'm liking the cooler tone through there as well. It's just breaking up the harshness of the sable in particular, which is quite dark and quite, quite a heavy contrast. So I'm just using the whole plate to sort of spread out. If you don't have a big plate, just use like a big bit of paper or cardboard just to dip your brush off on. I like to use plates because I don't soak up the paint and the finish. So I'm using, it's a combination of silk finish, which has got the built-in top coat and the stain and glaze, which has a built-in top coat as well. However, because these are bedside tables, I'm going to seal these with a top coat just to make sure they're not going anywhere. I find bedside tables are always quite heavily used. And um, I just wanna make sure that these have got that longevity that they need as well. So you can sort of keep going with this as much as you like. You can always step back and take a little break if you need to. So you can sort of decide whether or not you wanna keep going. Pottery barn look. I think that's the term that they're using. Is that it? Pottery barn? I think that's it. I kept, I was trying to think earlier, sorry, that was very random. Trying to think earlier, what is everyone calling this look? Because it's very big, particularly in America at the moment, very, very big. And I could not remember for the life of me what store they were referring to. We don't have, well, I don't think we've got, Pottery Barn in Australia. And I couldn't remember what it was. This is, I'm sure that's it. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but. I'm sure that's the term that I was trying to think of earlier and I couldn't. Now, if you find it's a little bit heavy, you can still come in with um, your base color still as well. But this is why I like to have a nice neutral base color underneath because it's a nice, easy way to add more detail if you need to. I'm just gonna hit it with the hairdryer just for a second. So it's feeling a little bit wet. It is quite cool today. It's feeling a little bit wet and I don't want it to blend together too much. I do want those lines happening. You could certainly do this with a lighter, lighter colors as well. Um, you could even do it with like color colors like pinks and purples or greens and blues. Um, you don't have to do it with browns, but I do, I'm specifically after more of it like a faux timber finish. So that's why I've done this. Now over here, just please don't fall off. Where's the front of it there? I picked up this coffee table. Did I pick it up? No, I think my husband appeared with this coffee table. I don't do coffee tables, but it's got a lot of damage on the top. So I thought it was perfect height for this. Um, it's just blended a little bit too heavily over here. Can you see that difference where this is nice and spread out? This is feeling a little bit blended. So I'm gonna start by going over with some of my fawn, just a little bit. See if I can break it up 
if I can't break it up enough and I'm still not happy with it, I'm going to go in just a little bit of my fossil. Bringing some undertone might be just enough to break it up. I'm just really gently going to brush that over there. Just having a little bit on my brush. And this is why I dried it as well. It was just blending a little bit. And I don't necessarily want it, want that strong blend there. That's better. I just wanted to break it up a little bit. I might grab some of that fossil actually. It's better, but it's just not quite. It's getting there. I wanna come in with a little bit more of my sable across there as well. I'm liking the difference that I get with the sable. That, that contrast is beautiful. And you really could just play around with this all day as well. You can take so much time doing this and you can keep on layering. That's a bit better. I just broke it up a little bit. And I coated that sable over the top. I'll take, obviously when I stage these, I'll do some nice close up photos as well. So you can really see the finish that we've achieved. Um, but I thought it was a good one way to see. Now, for the edges, I'm gonna start with my sable. The front edge is easy, pretty self-explanatory because we're gonna do the exact same. Oops, that's okay, that's a little bit thicker just there. Exactly the same direction that we've done the top. Going to go in with our sable. Next, I'm gonna grab a little bit of our Brumby. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of our fawn. Now this bit here is feeling a little bit empty, so I'm just gonna come in with a touch more of the sable and the fawn on the brush at the same time. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm going to come in with just a light coat of the sable over again, just to break that up and give us that nice finish. Now for the ends, these are, I'm not sure if you can see that. This is like a chunk, that's the main piece. And then it's got like, there's a line. This is like attached to that piece. So this piece here is technically part of this, but obviously we've gone all the way to the end. I'm not going to, I could have masked that up and then done that, but that was a lot of mucking around. And to be honest, I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to go this direction and I'm going to be really careful not to get it on my painted side. And um, I'm going to go that way. Like so. Might even turn our brush a little bit. A smaller brush would be ideal for an edge, but here we are. We're using what we've got. And I don't want to make another brush dirty either. <laughs> a little bit of our Bromby and a touch of our fawn on our brush. The ed ends are never going to look quite as pretty. I just want to grab a little bit more of our Bromby because there's like none left on my plate. Just a little drop. I only need a drop. I'm just going to dry my brush a little bit. I think there's a bit much finish on there. to reactivate when it gets wet but it's just going to stop it from blurring together too much. I'm just going to put a little bit of brumby on the end. I 
like so. And then a little bit of the sable. Like so. And again, I'm going to let that dry for a second. Let me turn it and we'll do the other end. And I'll bring you in for a sec in a second as well to have a closer look. Oops, overall. Here's our other side. Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? That's always a good question to ask in the middle of a live, isn't it? Some sable, just a little bit. So you can see there's quite a lot of paint now on my brush. That's why I dried it just a little bit. There's too much on there. Just gonna wipe the excess off on the edge of my plate. That's fine. We can, you can always go through if you've got a damp cloth on you, just to wipe that excess off. Like so. I'm gonna come in with a, a little bit of our Brumby. Again, tapping the excess off on our plate. And the stain glaze dries really, really quickly. The silk finish, when it's applied this thinly, dries really quick as well. So you do, like, because it's drying so quickly, you're not blending it together too much as well, which is nice because we don't want too much blended. Like so. We're going to let that dry for a second. Let's come back around to the front. Normally, obviously, I wouldn't move something this much, but I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. There we go. Where are you? There you go. Okay. So, our front's doing quite well. I'm going to come in with just a little bit of our fawn. Again, just a little bit. A little bit more than that. Well, touch. And then... And you really can't see it, but it's really subtle and it's, it does make that little bit of a difference there too. And then I'm gonna come in with the tiniest bit of my sable over the top of that. I'm just sort of letting that sable catch sort of on the raised bits. So it, there's not a lot there, but it's just enough that it's it's there, but it's not. And I'm going to do the same down this side again. Sorry, I'm not going to turn it. You'll just have to believe me. <laughs> like so. I'm going to grab a little bit of our fawn down there as well. I'll wipe that bit off. Now the top's looking really, really good. I'm going to very gently Turn my plate. I just want to wipe off. So that's just some of that excess on there. So while I want a little bit on there, I don't want too much. I'm very lightly, and my like I'm very loosely holding my brush. So that sable is just going to catch on any raised bumps. Really, really lightly. My hand's literally just there to give it a little bit of a guide. And the brush is doing the work. So this is just catching on the bits that are a little bit raised to give it a little bit more a little bit more detail. I'm going to come in with a touch more of my, what's it called, fawn. I'm doing the same again on the edges, just a tiny little bit. This front edge I'm pretty happy with. It's looking really good. Let's, oh goodness, they're quite heavy, these bedsides. They're very solid. Let's do the same on this side. 
I want just a little bit of my sable. Like so. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my fawn as well. Like so. So super easy, just enough that it has followed along from the top. So it all blends together. It doesn't look like it's big opposite pieces. It's all one big, beautiful piece. So there's just some excess paint on my brush. I'm just running over it gently, letting the brush do the work. bit different. So let me move my stuff and I'll bring you in for a closer look for a second. Um, and I'll get this other table sanded and painted again and then I'll finish this one off tomorrow. Um, and then when I stage them, I'll take heaps of photos of the top so you can get a really good idea of what it looks like finished. And go from there. So that I love. This obviously I didn't. Um, maybe I just need more practice at it. It's just not for me. Let me pull you down. Sorry, I'm going to move you. Let me turn the camera. All right, so here's where we're at. So you can see all those layers in there. It looks like a very, very fine timber grain, something similar to um, oak. Actually, I can probably sh I can show you an oak in a second, give you an idea of what we're looking at. And because, like, I haven't tried to make sure my lines are perfectly straight either, so it gives you there's a little bit of wonkiness to it, just enough so it looks a little bit more authentic as well. Just to give you an idea, and there's this one. Here is this one, rather. So this one's with the wood graining tool. I I think it, I need a lot more practice, but I'm just not, just not loving it. It was fun to try. I don't think it could be improved a lot. A lot. Oh, uh, hang on. Rep approved. Improved, improved upon a lot. Um, I think you could maybe wipe a glaze over it, but even then, like it's very, it's a very harsh sort of line. And I think even if you did it with not as much contrast, um, like this is mostly that looks like mostly the sable, whereas over here we've got the fawn. It is, it's quite a harsh finish. I think I'll have to have a play around and see if there's a way to get it so it doesn't look quite as quite as harsh as what it does. But that's that, and I'll show you these. So this is oak. These draw fronts are oak. So you can see how close together the lines, so the grain is. So that's sort of what we've gone for on here. So you could, like, on close inspection, you can see it's paint, but from further away, you could almost, almost believe. And that's the whole idea. It's just a faux timber finish. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it complements the main colour really well, which is the fossil. I think once the drawers are in it, it's, it's going to be quite lovely. Okay, I think that's it from me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've learnt something. I hope you have a go. Please share with me if you do. I'd love to see what you come up with. I'd love to see some different colour combinations as well. This was so much fun. Uh, quite the learning curve today. But, um, yeah, I think that's it. Our next live will be with a different project, I think. 
think we're up to a new one now. I'll have to work out what we're going to do next. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye.